It was 8.15 in the morning on August 6th, 1945. People were on their way to work, children were starting their lessons in school, and three planes flew 31,060 feet above the Japanese city of Hiroshima. The bomb exploded 1,968 feet above the city. Three days later, a second bomb was dropped over Nagasaki. To this day, the exact number of people killed in the bombings remains contested. It is likely unknowable. After the Manhattan Project successfully tested their new atomic weapon, the US military had two bombs available for use, Little Boy and Fat Man. The atomic bombs were intended to destroy Japan's ability to make war while also sending a message to other adversaries about the latest American weapon. Hiroshima was considered an ideal target to showcase the power of the bomb. Detonation at the ideal altitude above the city, flat and surrounded by hills, would demonstrate the power and spectacle of the bomb. The second bomb was originally bound for Kokura, but heavy cloud cover forced the pilot to reroute to a secondary target, Nagasaki. That bomb detonated northwest of the city, in the Urakami Valley. In both cities, survivors reported seeing a bright flash of light, followed by a loud booming sound. Moments after detonation, each city was engulfed in flames and reduced to ruin. The Japanese surrendered six days after the bombing of Nagasaki, and signed a treaty to make their surrender official on September 2nd. The U.S. was eager to know the effects of the bombs and sent scientists to Hiroshima and Nagasaki as part of the first landing party. In trying to establish the number of deaths, the first task was to establish how many people were in both cities to begin with. Unfortunately, before the bombings, the Japanese didn't know the population of either city. The best proxies for the population were originally thought to be rice ration cards, but they didn't include transient laborers and were often outdated. The Manhattan Project estimated that there were 255,000 people in Hiroshima and 195,000 in Nagasaki, but they were not confident in their mortality numbers and called them a guess. After establishing the population of the cities, a joint commission of researchers from the Allied Forces and Japan created mortality curves to establish the death rate based on the proximity to the bomb. This required knowledge of how many people were in various parts of the city at the time of the bombing. The most reliable count of population was from a source that kept meticulous attendance records, schools, and school children. Here's a map of the schools in Hiroshima. At the time of the bombing, many of the children were not in class. Instead, they were assigned to patriotic work parties across the city. The data from their attendance allowed researchers to establish damage and death totals throughout the city. At the Motokawa Primary School, number one, Located only half a kilometer from ground zero, 100% of the 192 students were killed. At the third location, all of the 134 students from two schools who were assigned to clearing fire breaks were killed. Within roughly half a kilometer of the explosion, virtually everyone died instantly. Within 1,200 meters of the blast, around 50% died that day. The American and Allied figures were similar to each other which is most likely attributable to them using the same assumptions for the pre-bombing populations of the cities. Several Japanese estimates were also published in the 1940s, but given their poor record-keeping during the war, allies were skeptical about their accuracy. A tricky element in establishing the death toll is time. Most deaths occurred in the immediate aftermath of the bombing, and some occurred months later. There are also those who died many years later from cancer caused by excess radiation exposure. In 1975, the UN supported a Japanese-led effort to reevaluate the aftereffects of the bombings, which led to much higher estimates than in the 1940s. Why is there such a large difference between these estimates and those of the 1940s? The main disagreement stems from the number of people in the cities at the time of the bombings. In particular, the Japanese symposium in the 1970s concluded that another 10,000 victims could be added to Hiroshima because military victims had been left out of the American studies. 30,000 Korean workers may have been killed at Hiroshima, and up to 10,000 in Nagasaki, but those numbers are very uncertain. 
Anyone who was commuting to work and wasn't a resident of the city would have been present, but not counted. There's a great deal of uncertainty being dealt with in these estimates, and none of them should be dismissed for under or over counting. The initial estimates from the 1940s placed their low estimates around 70,000 deaths at Hiroshima and 40,000 at Nagasaki. That's 110,000 total. The Japanese re-estimates from the 1970s placed their high estimates around 140,000 at Hiroshima and 70,000 at Nagasaki. That's 210,000 total. Both recognize that the majority of deaths occurred on the day of the bombing, with nearly all of them taking place by the end of 1945. Neither of these should be considered more authoritative than the other. This isn't an easy calculation to make, but it's important to try.